Hi, this is Valerie from Valerie's Photo Channel with a tutorial on converting an image to black and white. There are several ways you can convert your image to black and white, but they're not all created equal. I'll show you several ways from fast and easy to a more powerful way. First though, I want to suggest that you start with a raw image rather than a JPEG if possible, because the raw file will have the extra data that you want to make a really beautiful black and white conversion from color. First off, here's a quick and dirty way to see how an image would look in black and white. Hit the V key, either from the library or from the develop module, for a quick black and white conversion. And then hit it again to convert it back to color. Now this is just to see what it would look like, whether you would even like it in black and white. I'll show you other ways for black and white conversion next. Let's first look at the built-in Lightroom presets on the left side of the develop module, because this can be a good place to start, especially if you're new to black and white conversion. So Lightroom has a number of presets. I think there are about six or seven here. And you just can just run your mouse through, just scroll through, um, hovering over them. And you can see in the navigator in the upper left-hand corner what that might look like. So, and then if there's one that you like, say, let's just click on the bottom one, and then that will apply to your image. And that can be a place to start from to make other adjustments. So I'm just going to hit Control Z to go back and undo that. So that is one way uh, and a perfectly good way of uh, creating to black and white. And I'll show you another way. Over here on the right hand panel, you'll see HSL color and black and white. Just click on black and white and your image will convert to black and white. And you, uh, on my screen, all of these, um, you see all the, the zeros and all of the sliders are zeroed out. You may see um, sliders in various positions here and numbers here. And if so, that means that under Preferences, which you can get to by clicking on Edit, Preferences, or Control Plus, and then going to the Presets tab, if you have this checked here where it says Apply Auto Mix when first converting to black and white, and that's a good thing, so you can go ahead and leave that checked or check it if it's not checked. I'm not going to do it though right now because I want to show you something else. And that means that Lightroom will automatically apply um, a black and white mix to your image and what it thinks would be the best, um, the best uh, mixture or best settings. Now, the other way of getting to that if you don't have that check mark um, marked under preferences is to just simply click on auto here and then Lightroom will apply an automatic mix. And it may not be a bad place, and you may like it. Um, and then from here, you may want to make individual adjustments to these sliders to get a better mix to suit your particular image. Because Lightroom isn't going to know what's important to you. Say, you know, if you want the sky darker or lighter or, you know, the grass lighter or something, uh, you know, something different. So you can go ahead and make your own adjustments. Now I want to show you another way, and I think it, this is probably the better way of converting to black and white. And I'm just going to click on um, Control Z to go back to color. And I'm going to use the HSL panel. And under the HSL panel, I'm going to go over to the saturation. You, know, you may recall that you've got hue You've got saturation and you've got luminance sliders and I'm going to go to the saturation section and then I'm going to zero or negative 100 rather all of these sliders so I am taking out all of the saturation and yet this takes a few seconds longer And this is a better way of converting to black and white because you get some more control. So watch what happens when I go over to luminance. Now with luminance, I can adjust individual sliders to, um, to target individual colors if I want them darker or, or brighter. So for example, if I want to make the sky darker, 
I can target the aquas and the blues. So I'm going to pull down the blue and I'm going to pull down the aqua. And the other way I could do that would be to take this uh, targeted adjustment tool here, just click on it and bring it into the image. And then I'm going to click and drag down. And then you can see very dramatically, um, you can see how far the blue and the aqua sliders move. And you can also see a touch of purple. And you can get a pretty dramatic look that way. And say I wanted to lighten the grass a little bit, well, I could use the same uh, targeted adjustment tool and I'm going to go down here into the grass and I'm going to uh, drag up and you can see that both the green as well as the yellow sliders are moving. So you can, um, so there are actually yellows within the greens. And that's why I like using this tool better than maybe just sliding the sliders because I may not realize that there's yellow in um, that particular area, but Lightroom's um, wonderful algorithms know. And so that kind of just helps you get better, um, just better tones, better adjustments. So I want to also show you one other way of making these um, color mix adjustments and that's just, I'm not going to go into a great detail, but I just wanted to show you the camera calibration section. You can go in here and you can adjust um, the shadows, you can adjust the tint to the left or to the right. I can just see some subtle, t if you look in the sky and maybe in the grass you can see some subtle changes. And you can also make adjustments to um, the red, green, and blue to the hue and saturation of each of these. So Lightroom does give you a lot of control and a lot of different ways to get your color mix, um, your black and white mix. So I'm going to go on up to the basics panel. And then from here, I want to make a few other um, adjustments. I think uh, first of all I want to set the black and the white point. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm going to drag the slider to the right until I start to see a pinpoint of color and then I'm going to just back off a little to set my whites and then I'm going to do the same thing for the blacks and drag to the left and I'm going to leave a little bit more black mm, about, about right there to set the black point. And I also think that I'm going to open up the shadows a little because it's really pretty dark right in here. And I want to just try, um, if I pull up the shadow slider, you can see we're getting a little bit more, um, a little bit more definition there. And I also find that uh, this area right here of the lifeguard tower is pretty light, um, pretty overexposed right here with the sun. So I'm going to go ahead and take a um, adjustment brush and I'm going to zero, I'm going to leave the exposure at, mm, let me try about point, minus point 0.38, let's try that. And I'm just going to paint over this area here to just bring it down a little and that looks a tad better. And I also think I'm going to take a new brush by clicking on new. I'm going to double click on effect to reset everything. And I think I want to add a little bit of clarity to the sign here, uh, just to make that a little sharper and stand out a little bit more. Just to bring that up a little bit, like so. And there are other things you can do. Let's just close that out. If I still wanted the sky a little bit more intense, I'm not sure if I do, but if I, I could add a graduated filter and let's bring down the exposure a little. This might be too much, but um, that's something we could do. And if I want to just overall brighten the exposure I could, whoop, way too much, maybe about right, about right there. And then next, let's go down to the detail panel and let's 
add a little sharpening. I'm going to bring this up to about 79. I'm going to leave the detail at about 25. And then I'm going to finish off with the effects panel and I'm going to add a post crop vignette because I think that vignettes look really great on black and white. Let's bring it uh, to about, about there. And there's one more thing I want to show you that's really fun. So let's go back to our um, black and white, um, or I mean our HSL panel here, and let's go back to saturation. And this is why you want to use the HSL panel rather than the black and white conversion. Oh, you don't, you want to use the HSL versus using this black and white here because this enables you to add a little saturation, a little color back in if you want. And so for example, I'm going to, let's say we want to show some blue in the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the blue. And you can see now we have a hint of blue. So you can see this, how fun this can be. And the uh, creative options are just endless. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And to be sure to subscribe to get all of my Lightroom tutorials. And if you like this one, I hope you'll hit the like button. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more tips and tutorials as we work our way through the Lightroom workflow. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of them. I also want to give you a copy of my free guide to digital photography basics to help you improve your photography skills and understand your how to use your camera's manual settings. You can get it for free at my website, www.valeriegetch.com forward slash digital hyphen photography hyphen basics. Now go out with your camera and have fun, and I'll see you back here soon.